What is up, everybody, and welcome to my kitchen, uh, where we will be recreating the tastes and smells from Hyrule and the campfires found all over Breath of the Wild. But more importantly, welcome to Pop Stream, the streaming channel from your friends at Pop Culture Classroom and Denver Pop Culture Con, where we talk about your media because this is your Pop Stream. As always, I'm your host, Matt Slater. You can find me at Maddie Slay on Twitter and Twitch. And this, today, we've got episode three of the Pop Stream Workshop, where, like I said, we are going to be talking about some Zelda recipes today. This is the show where you get to come and learn a couple skills from some professionals around the community that you can learn to uh, pursue a professional vocation or just apply to your everyday life, like we're going to do here. And for every episode of the Pop Stream Workshop, I am joined by someone that I really cannot say enough good things about. Uh, Tajan, how are you doing today? Hey, Matt, you're so sweet. I'm excited for this. I cannot wait. I have been thinking about this particular episode of the demo for weeks. I'm trying to hold in my girlish squealing, but this is going to be a really fun, this is going to be a fun episode. Don't hold it in. Let it out, right? Just, we're here to be excited. Um, but Tasia and I are here. We're in our kitchens. We're going to be cooking along with some fabulous folks that are the creators or the creator of the unofficial Legend of Zelda cookbook. So today with us, we have Amy Wood and her Hi. sous chef for the day, Walter Silviera. Did I say that correctly? Uh, Sil Silvera, but yes, close enough. <laughs> close enough. Awesome. Hello, How are you guys thank doing? Thank you so much for having us on your, on your show. We're very excited to show you some recipes I, today. So excited. Like I, when Tajin brought this up as an idea, we were like, yeah, we're doing that. We have to do it. It's happening. So happy to finally have you guys here. Um, what, I mean, give us a call. Who are you? First of all, for anybody who doesn't know you. Uh, hi, I'm Amy Wood. I um, live in Denver. And over the last three years, I have written this monstrosity of a cookbook, which is called the unofficial Legend of Zelda cookbook. It has... And by monstrosity, you mean it is gorgeous. Thank you. <laughs> It has it's stunning. Like it's so beautiful. Thank you. I I adore it. Um, when I set out to publish this, this was not what I was. Exp I I mean, in my wildest daydreams, this is what I I hoped that it could be. Um, but Dream thanks big. to uh -huh. one thousand five hundred and eleven backers last mm -hmm. year, some of whom Ooh. might be watching right now. So we thank love you, guys you, Kickstarter so, backers, so much. <laughs> Um, they helped me independently publish these. And so we have a standard edition, a master edition. They've been with me like every step of the way while I figured out independent publishing is an adventure of its own. Um, and it's, it's just been, it's I been wonderful. Imagine. Yeah. Before that point, um, I've been like part of the cosplay scene here in Denver yep. for a long time. Yep. I okay. adore Denver pop culture con, have been going well, since before, like Denver Comic Con. Like I've been there for a long time and it's just wonderful to be here and to have you guys talking to me like i am very excited um yeah yeah and this is my lovely partner oh walter he's a bit of a magician's assistant i i am today so i will be in and out of the camera today i'll be doing stuff behind the scenes and helping amy out uh but i uh work as an e-commerce professional so what i help people do is build businesses online and kind of scale them up so I have a lot of friends who make cool, nerdy things, and I help them be profitable on Etsy and Shopify. Um, and in my day job, I also help a lot of like corporate clients and things like that. Basically, just build up and and have a successful business. It's also, um, like my tech assistant. And I'm also the tech assistant. This <laughs> uh, and I also volunteer today. I love that. Yeah, I also volunteer with DPCC and have had yeah. a great time. So uh, looking forward to helping out and adding some content. That's, so where did the idea for the, the cookbook come from? Like what, okay. not only is it a cookbook, but it's a massive cookbook. Thank you. So what spurred this idea to be like, let's make all these recipes and put them in this cookbook? Thank you. It came in like a feverish nightmare of, okay, it was 2017. 2017. I was actually um, the cosplay contest judge for the for Anime Boston. Yep. Um, so we're out there. We okay. haven't had a switch yet. I've like, I've loved Legend of Zelda for a long time. Hashtag Ocarina of Time is the best game. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll, I was just saying, we'll get to your favorite Zelda okay, game I'm here sorry. in a sec. <laughs> um, but Breath of the Wild had just come out, and this, like no one can find a Switch. They're they're sold out everywhere. Yep. Um, we have a friend who had managed to get one. Is playing Breath of the Wild. I'm like holding this game. Like I need I I need to have this. Yep. Um, we like 
<laughs> call up every Toys R Us. This was back when Toys R Us was still a thing. Right, yes, yeah. still alive. Um, <laughs> and we find one is getting a shipment at five in the morning the next day. We like drive out. We wait in, like we wait outside with like ten other nerds. Like like I hope that they have enough switches for all of it's us. It's the freezing cold New England it's, morning. <laughs> yeah, it's Massachusetts because Anime Boston, right? Like it's horrendous. It's like March or April yep. or something. Um, so we got the switch. We got the game. I start playing. And I realized there's a complete food system yep. in Breath of the Wild. There are so many, like li literally, there are hundreds of recipes. All of them look amazing. Like I'm, I'm looking at like seafood paella and salmon beignet. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I need to make this. So I like, I think I started with like curry rice or something. Uh -huh. And then um, like, okay. I, I like just kept on making them and I am a scientist. And so I write things down when I experiment. And after, I feel like it was like 10 or 20 recipes, I got the idea in my head of, I'm going to make every single one. I'm going to make every single recipe. And at this point, it still wasn't a cookbook. It was just me not having a lot of things to do. <laughs> All around, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I continued writing them down. It kind of grew and grew. I finished every, every single recipe in Breath of the Wild is in this book. Um, it also has game guides That's for each one. Funny. So if you're like, okay, I can make it in real life. How do I make it in the game? I got you covered. Uh, but I started oh, to branch awesome. out. Oh, that's awesome. You don't yeah. have to book around. You don't even need to like Wikipedia that. Exactly. You just open you your just, cookbook You just and flip through yes. the Hyrulean tome that you've got on your bookshelf and it'll tell you. Uh, so I expanded. How many and, recipes are, are in this book? Yes. Okay. So the standard edition, hilariously, has, does it say it? 195, 195. recipes. Um, okay. The master edition has a exclusive master chapter. This is like the boss chapter this is like the of the stuff. cookbook, right? Like you, this they're is the very master quest. They're very like, listen, you need to be a master. Um, and so this one has seven more recipes. It's two hundred and two recipes. Uh, I say two hundred and two, but incredible. it's actually very difficult to count because many reference like recipes reference other recipes and have nested recipes, and so like at minimum. 195 and 202, but I, I don't know. <laughs> so we actually, like our skewers chapter, for example, has like a lot of sub recipes in it. And it's actually written like a choose your own adventure game. Blurp, I'm mm -hmm. into that. Oh, You're like spoiling things. Totally spoiled it. Totally spoiled it. We're gonna make Spoilers right from now. Walter. So unprofessional. <laughs> he has to leave immediately. That's like my cookbook. <laughs> there's a whole adventure. You can die. There's a narrative in the cookbook. You can die of dysentery. There are hidden pages. Like I'm not messing around i'm sorry i'm talking yeah, about I, I will say when i saw that that part of the cookbook i was pretty impressed i was like not only is it like all these recipes but then with smack dab in the middle you just change the format and make it a choose your own adventure story and it's really really cool well amy and walter uh they're going to be guiding us through about five different recipes today and we're going to get that to a second um, but first, I want to tell you a little bit about PopStream. So especially if you are a new listener today or a new viewer, thank you so much. Welcome. Hope you enjoy the show. Uh, we are live every Thursday. And you're going to watch me read this off of my iPad because it's not memorized yet. <laughs> but we're live every Thursday at 4 p.m. Mountain Time on PopStream's YouTube and Twitch channels, um, as well as the Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube pages for Pop Culture Classroom and Denver Pop Culture Con. And if you are watching live, you get to be a part of the show like so many people I'm already seeing in the chat. We've got Nikki on YouTube. We've got Christopher on YouTube. We've got Sydney on Twitch. Thank you guys for being here. Um, you get to be part of the chat. So you can, if you have questions about recipes for Amy and Walter, throw those there. And Tajan and I will put those questions their way. Um, you can also just heckle Tajan and I as we try to complete these recipes. All of these things are encouraged and accepted. So make sure you get in the chat. It makes a great experience for everyone watching and everyone creating the show. But if you can't watch us live, we've still got you covered. You can watch this show and all of our other amazing PopStream content on demand on youtube.com slash PopStream. Or if you prefer just to listen to us on the go or while you're making your own recipes at home, we're also available on all podcast channels. Well, not all, but we're available on the big ones. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. And if you are watching or listening on demand right now, don't be left out. You can still participate. You can email us at popstream at popcultureclassroom.org. Give us your questions, your recommendations for future shows and guests, or just chime in about something we chatted about on the show and you can get your email read live on the air. My absolute but no matter where you're watching or listening, do us a big favor. 
Give us a like, make sure you're subscribed, ring the bell for notifications, give us a five-star review, all that good stuff. And if you really like us, you'll do all of that at youtube.com slash pop stream and on as many of the podcast services as you can. We appreciate the views no matter where they come from, but that is where they make the biggest difference. So, Tajan, are we ready? I think so. I'm so excited. <laughs> I don't get to cook until later, but oh. I am I am ready and this is going to be amazing. So Walter and Amy, what are we making okay. today? So uh, we're starting out with the Skewer Adventure Chapter, which as we have already been spoiled, is <laughs> what? actually what? a choose your own adventure style game um, within the chapter. And so normally you would pick out your like marination. Like I have like three different, I feel like it's like garlic, lemon, mm -hmm. um, something barbecue. It's been too long since what? I've looked Pineapple, at this. Pineapple, right? Oh yeah, we have a pineapple oh, yes. one. Yeah, I love that one. <laughs> Orange teriyaki, delicious. garlic, rosemary, lemon, and pineapple barbecue. But we're actually going to just skip past all of these things and this entire chapter because I, I put <laughs> the mushroom skewer recipe at the very end. And this has been my favorite for years. And Breath of the Wild has copious amounts of variety of mushrooms and then therefore mushroom skewers. So I figured we could do this and it's, it's quite easy and fun. Um, and you don't have to go to Hyrule to harvest these mushrooms. You can just use portobello. Sweet. <laughs> but great. It, so, it, yes. Hello. Uh, we're, we're doing five different recipes today. So we're creating, and if I got this right, we're creating kind of like a, a tea time buffet finger, finger sampler. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, exactly. We'll have two tea-based drinks, and then we'll have the mushroom skewer. We'll have rock hard food, which is like a delicious rolled cram, like graham cracker ball. And mm -hmm. I wrote this down. <laughs> red shoe jelly. Red shoe jelly, yes. <laughs> which is based off of go, like right? the red shoes from the games, which are enemies. But instead, why not eat them? It's great. <laughs> right. So these would be some perfect recipes for like snacks during a football game. Or I know Thanksgiving is going to look a whole lot different this yes. year for a lot of us. But it's something to spice up your holiday time with a really great meal. Um, so I don't know. Let's let's get started. It's delicious. Make some okay. So uh, I have mushrooms all washed and prepared here. Um, you're supposed to use a pound. Oh, might as well. I did not actually buy a pound. I only bought half a pound. I wasn't paying attention. Do as I say, not as I do. Peace to, to what we need to do. <laughs> yes, very much so. Actually, my, my biggest struggle with making this cookbook was like actually narrowing down <laughs> what I had done and what was best. Like, oh yeah, one fourth teaspoon cinnamon is good. But also if you really like right. cinnamon, just pour in half a teaspoon or right. a whole teaspoon. Like I like do what you love. Also, you don't like garlic, don't Take put it liberties. in. I well it's just that's we're not putting garlic into this one, because but. the cooking is just putting lots of things in a pot sometimes and seeing what you make. And sometimes it's dubious, and other times it's a cooking adventure. So we're just gonna well, we're gonna do our best. Um so we're doing one fourth cup question. avocado oil into this. I am not gonna do that much because again I did not buy enough mushrooms. Um, and then we're going to do... And in the spirit of seed. customization... Actually, I'm going to do exactly that. In, mm -hmm. in the spirit of customization, if you don't have avocado oil laying around, olive oil, probably totally okay? Yeah, totally okay. I'm just a little bit fancy. So I really Amy's like, like no, absolutely oil. not. For, Only avocado oil. Yeah, you can't do that. No, mm -mm. There are actually a ton of alternatives in this cookbook because... Some people are gluten free and some people are vegan or vegetarian. I actually mark every single recipe with like if it's vegan mm -hmm. or if it's gluten free. And I try to provide as many alternatives for like common allergies as possible because like we're all nerds and I feel like gluten free or like vegan, like we're having different diets is really, really common. And so why not cater to the people who yes. actually need something okay. than cater to a mainstream populace that doesn't care. So Say yeah, sure. almost all of these have vegetarian options in them or vegan options yeah. with pre options. We try to really hard to be as inclusive as possible with the book. Yeah. I was really excited about that because I don't do dairy and I was planning on emailing you to ask like what were some substitutions when I looked at the recipes and I was like, they're ahead of me. I got you. <laughs> I got you. I also try to avoid dairy because it like breaks me out. So having having multiple options is wonderful. Also, I find that vegan desserts end up fit, like sitting watch, like way more lightly yep. and like yeah. just you don't feel terrible after eating the gigantic chocolate monster cake. Yeah. <laughs> so I do have I do have two different versions of that. So if you want the traditional delectable 
ridiculous chocolate cake I got you, but I also have like a bean monster cake, which is Ooh. the best vegan chocolate cake I have ever made. Um, and as you can imagine, I made a lot of those because I did a lot of testing. Yes, we, we inflicted all of these on our friends at various points. And so that they've been rigorously <laughs> focus do. tested. That's true. Okay, so we've got the avocado oil we put in the dill weed. I just put one teaspoon garlic salt. And we've got our mushrooms. We're going to do about half of this mixture. And like, you're going to have to stir it while you pour because otherwise you're just going to pour out the oil and none of the dill weed um, over the yep, mushrooms that we it have. Up. There you go. It's fine. <laughs> We're okay. Um, just over the... Just add, a, add a little extra oil. Oh, dear, that's okay. That's fine. Listen. Um, and I'm just going to use my hands because I'm a messy person. And I think cooking... Like cooking and getting your hands messy. That's the fun part. The fun. So I'm going to just mix Better. this up. What'd you say? Now, I'm using Baby Bella's and shiitake mushrooms. What mushrooms yes! Are you using? Yes! Um, so I think these are portobellos. These are, these are portobellos, yep. yeah. Um, I figured that I wouldn't get too fancy, but Matt is just showing me up right now with his shiitake. It's fine. I love a good shiitake. Okay, so now once we've got them mostly, like, coated, and your hands are also coated, we're going to do um, just, like, I like to keep one inch between each mushroom as a rule. Um, we're just going to put them know. onto our skewers. Uh, just like now, that. Look, look how fancy this is. Amy, if you wanted, could you add other veggies on here too? Yes, and that's yep. what the rest of the of the chapter is about. You, there are so many things you can put on. I have recipes for like meat and vegetable and like rainbow. Like choose your own. Like it's 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 very very customizable. I also adore skewers. It was like one of my mainstay childhood meals. Cause, yes. Like. Children love this because you get they get to make their own thing and put it on a skewer and then put it on a grill, assuming that they're not using raw meat. Don't let children. Well, touch and I raw was looking meat. up some of the photos from the recipes in Breath of the Wild, and there's so many different. Yeah, the the hearty meat skewer, the mushroom and meat skewer. Exactly. Yeah, uh, I I cover them all, um, but that that was why I had to do some sort of weird chapter because <laughs> there were just too many options for me to try to make a recipe for every single mushroom right. thing. So I'm going to let you like go on an adventure and figure it out for yourself. Well, as we're skewering these, yes. uh, Jordan on YouTube says that his cookbook should be here on Saturday. He's super, super excited. Oh my God, Jordan, um, thank you for buying one. Yeah. At McLaughlin on Twitch says, if you don't like garlic, you should leave. Very, very true. <laughs> um, very, but very lots of love for your, lots of love for your, Lots of love for your cookbook out here. Um, table for her says, hey, Walter, nice cameos. Oh my gosh, They're hi, here Carrie. for you. That's Carrie. <laughs> That's our friend. Um, and then Christopher wants to know, what are some veg good, if we were to add vegetables, what would be some good vegetables to kind of go with this theme? Uh, bell peppers, onions. Uh, what else? Um, okay, let me read you the whole, I'm just going to get this. Okay, bonus ingredients page, which is part of the adventure chapter. Ooh, there you go. Um, you've prepared a marinade, used half of it, now it's time to choose the extra ingredients. You can choose as few or as many as you like. Baby tomatoes, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, corn of the cob, baby carrots, eggplant, lemon, mini bell peppers, okra, onions, orange, pineapple, potato, radish, squash, zucchini. And all of these kind of have like a sentence or two of instructions with them. Because some of them like, okay, try spearing a carrot. I dare you. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, more more try. Make sure you roast your... Yeah. That's awesome. And we were actually talking about this. Um, one of our viewers said, thank you for the metric uh, system. We were talking about this yes, pre-show before we went yes. live. Uh, Amy talking about they wanted to make sure that for all of our, all of their European uh, or, or um, you know, uh, people across the pond that are reading the book, you've got all the metric measurements. Yeah, in there. well, I, I started the Kickstarter and realized I just had a ton of international backers and I didn't want them to get the book and realize, oh no, I need to convert everything. And so I do have conversion pages mm -hmm. inside of the book, um, but I decided to just go through and ingredient by ingredient, convert everything to metric. Um, Which was a challenge. <laughs> it, it took me, it took me a yeah. long time. <laughs> I now have like very strange memorized facts about the metric conversion thing. Like, <laughs> it's okay. That's useful later. I, mean, I hope so have another question from Stuart M. Craig. He asks, do you have the dubious pixelated food? I do. Cooking? Yes, I was actually, I tested so many different things for that recipe. But so in the game, it is like a mush of like green and purple, like pixelation, plus like a bone sticking mm -hmm. out. And so we made this into a dessert. It is an almond Perfect. vanilla chia seed pudding. 
um, with berries. I think it's like so raspberries good. and blackberries. Yes. And then the bone, I'm so proud of this bone. It is a white chocolate bone with a lemon raspberry marrow. And Ooh. oh my God, it's, it's so good. It's really good. <laughs> um, That's amazing. Thank you. Uh, we, had, we had a lot of fun with it. It's inter oh. The I said vanilla almonds, but I I did not mention matcha. So that's how we matcha, ach yes. achieve the green color of that goo. It's like a matcha based um, thing. I really like it. It is that's kind of a light it. flavor, but then you've got the punch of eating the bone at the same yes. time and the berries. It's just a cute little dessert, and it's not dubious. I mean, it's dubious. A little and bit. Matcha <laughs> and it is not made. pretty. Yes, mm. it's not pretty, but it is delicious. <laughs> My husband and I just made on the Great British Bake Off. They did a matcha crepe cake in one of the recent episodes. We put oh that my together. goodness! It was very delicious. Um, Walter, I'm gonna have you man the ship. I'm gonna yes. wash my hands. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you want to go ahead and put it in the mushroom stewards? Yeah. No. All right. Just, just, just Hello. Pretty for a little bit. Absolutely. Walter, you, you can tell us what uh, what should our oven be at for the mushroom skewers? Uh, so for the mushroom skewers, you're going to want to preheat to 400 exactly. Um, any okay. higher, and okay. they don't get that nice, like, even heating. So 400 is perfect. Okay. And how long are they going to cook for? Um, uh, let's see. How long do the skewers cook for, Amy? Okay, I'm here. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to bake them for a total of 20 minutes, but we're also going to baste. Oh, you know what? I did not leave enough oil for the, for the basting part of this. It's fine. Um... We're gonna bake them for a total of 20 minutes and it doesn't really matter if you don't baste them. Uh, but I'm gonna pop mine in now. Um, Matt, if you have okay. the leftovers of yep, your oil, right. you're just gonna drizzle that over the top of it. Mm -hmm. Doesn't need to be too precise. Okay. We're gonna pop them in. Got my, my drizzler. Then about three minutes. Do they need to flip or anything yeah, like that? Yeah, we're gonna flip them at 10 minutes, I think is the first. Okay. Let's see what I wrote down. Oh, uh, the taste. Uh, yeah, so it's, uh, we're supposed to baste with a basting brush or spoon, lightly brush the mushrooms with the oil mix again on all sides, and then bake for 10 minutes. We'll take them out, brush on the oil, and we'll rotate them. Um, yeah, yeah, that'll be good. Okay, so Tajin, are you ready to start the red shoe jelly? What is next? Red shoe jelly. <laughs> Actually, Matt has I'm red with shoe you. jelly too because I am the world. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> and even seeing how you know, I would start to cough. So. <laughs> we're, we're gonna give it to, to someone who can handle it. Okay, I'm gonna get all of this out of my way. And right, that's wait. We watch a lot of worst cooks in America at our house, and that's something they always harp on: is keep your keep your your station clean. Indeed, you don't want to get dill weed into your red shoe jelly. I think as a as just a. <laughs> I'm kind of terrible. Okay. We put that dill in. I was just like. Oh, I love the smell of dill. It's I, so good. I adore dill with mushrooms. I, I really hope you enjoy this recipe. I'll make like 20 for a party and I will eat six of them. That's true. We have <laughs> repeatedly, like, and, and our friends. And so many people are like, I never got to try the mushrooms here. <laughs> I need to start labeling them with people's names. Our friends Sorry, are like, real good. Yeah. I've never tried mushrooms before. And then by the end of the party, they still have not. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to fight okay, for them. So... Are you ready? Um, this chapter has to do with a whole bunch of different jellies because we have like red shoes. A shoe is like a type of enemy in the Zelda, Zelda series. There's like, I think there's shoes in every game. Actually. Oh, yes. Absolutely. They come in a variety of colors. A lot of them are elemental. So you might have like white shoe jelly and they're like frost themed yep. or red shoe jelly, which is like lava, hot, fire. And so we're going to make red shoe jelly, which is hot. So it's strawberries and jalapeno and it is so good. Last time I made this actually did not come out spicy <laughs> enough for my taste. Um, like the jalapeno I picked out was a weak jalapeno. So I'm hoping that this one is better. Uh, that's the worst. I know. And you can't I, tell. I will not be having that problem. Yeah, I've been trying to lick them we in the went store, to the but store this really morning. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the store this morning and they were out of jalapenos. They said they wouldn't get jalapenos for a week. So again, in the spirit of, uh, you know, improvising, just... I will be using habanero. Uh -huh. I have never cooked with habanero before, so I'm going to start modest and we'll see how it goes. If okay. I pass out when we get to the tasting part, you know why. Yeah, and, and you keep going. Like <laughs> <laughs> I was only passed out before. Okay, so all right. So what are we what are we doing for our jelly? Um, this spicy jam is made with strawberries and a jalapeno, ideal over ice creams or atop meat dishes. It shouldn't explode on impact, but avoid testing anyway. <laughs> We're just gonna start with the strawberries. I have chopped them a little bit, 
but we're going to mash them anyway, so you don't really need to chop them. It just saves you a little bit of time and effort. I'm just going to put this into It, it, it a makes pot. it easier. Yeah, I, I quartered mine. I think mine. so. Yeah, I, I think it's easier. Um, so now we're just going to mash them. No, actually, I normally do this with my right. hands, but I, I felt like it was awkward for me to wash my hands afterwards. So I'll be a good person. <laughs> I, I've got my potato masher, so that's what we're using okay. today. Um, and we're just going to mash them. This is a really interesting cooking show. <laughs> Uh, now you can like leave this quite chunky. So I really like eating this, which is just pita chips. I just eat jelly with pita chips. This is my life now. Um, I've got my if, club crackers ready. Yeah, that's perfect. If you want it to be like more of a consistent texture, you could even blend this. Um, but I, I like chunky. Chunky is friendly. Um, if red is spicy and white is more frosty, what is the like green electric chew flavor? Mm. Yeah, okay, so we have yellow, green chew jelly. Now this was only, this is like also a spoiler, um, but I actually leave the description for green chew jelly in my book blank. And if you are really, really a Zelda nerd, mm -hmm. um, green chew jellies don't really exist. It was a single, I don't even remember what game it was. Wait. It was a single game, and it, but it existed in the game code, but it didn't have a, a description oh. like attached to it. So green chew jelly, like they do exist. It's just, they don't really exist. So I, it's made the, out of kiwi I, flesh. I think of, ooh. I think of the things Wait, was, in like uh, a link to the past, the like a little electric things that move around, but yeah, you don't get any jelly from it. Yes, that's correct. Um, well, we have okay. we have a yellow chew, which is electric. Uh, I'm not sure what enemy you're talking about. Mm, okay, okay. Uh, no, he's right. Yeah. The, old, the original green chews from Legend of Zelda technically were there. Are you talking about the black chew jelly? No, I do have the black chew jelly. Yes. It's completely different. Um, Let's see. Because we have this all the This forbidden colors. food cannot be found. Oh, no, this is the one that I was referencing. Yeah. This forbidden food cannot be found through normal gameplay. We only know of its existence through the game data of the Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Enjoy this forsaken treat made of raspberries and chocolate. It's really, really good. So we're super into, like, ROM hacks and speedrunners. And so we heard about the black shoes, and we were like, oh, yes, we need to. We need to have this in. Have to have um, it. For anyone watching, if you're into anything like the video games themselves, you can watch randomizers where people will load, like, hack the ROMs and load the game files where all the items and enemies are randomized. And this will actually pull in enemies and stuff that don't actually exist in the game proper. They're just in, like, the testing environment. It's incredibly interesting. Like, professional speedrunners will do this. Like, imagine, Bill. <laughs> it's so fascinating. Um, okay, so next we are going to add the pectin and we're going to put it on heat. This is not actually the type of pectin that I normally use, so we're just going to we're going to hope for the best. Um, and pectin is that like similar to like a gelatin? Oh, actually, so pectin is a plant hormone. Let me tell you about my plant soil and it's a like science degree. Oh. Uh, pectin is like a plant yes. hormone and it, it helps with the ripening of fruit. And so if you just isolate pectin, it will cause ripening in fruit. In fact, if you ever see like a, like a strange splattering on certain like vegetables and fruit, I, I see it most commonly in apples. Um, in the grocery store, it is because they were picked too early and then sprayed with pectin on the outside to make them appear red and delicious. Uh, okay, I'm sorry, wow. I'll stop. <laughs> yeah. Well, but pectin a, is, is well, quite That's what pectin is. There yeah, you go. You, you got it. It's a ripening... Um, Oh I was here like, oh, it's just like gelatin. It's fine. It, it does behave. You're not. You're not wrong. It makes. It, it thickens, um, particularly fruit things. So you would need this to make, like, jellies and preserves and things. Um, we're gonna do three tablespoons of it in my rug. Let me. Let me like, make sure that I'm just not making that up. I'm not making it up. It is three tablespoons. I think that was correct. Yeah. Oh, I've memorized this entire I, book. I measured out already. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, let's see, uh, Amarina, thank you for noticing my guardian amiibo up here. Much appreciated. Um, okay, so we're just putting in the strawberries and pectin, and we're going to put this on the stove on high heat, and we're going to stir it. On high heat, okay. Um, we're just going to make it, like, really, really sizzly. And um, we want to bring it to a full boil that does not dissipate with stirring. Um... I don't think this is enough strawberries. I think I should have probably had this. Can they recipe. find pectin at the store? Uh, yes, yes, you can. It's in the baking aisle, um, over near like the jarred mm -hmm. section and preserves. Okay. Same same area that you go for like pickling ingredients. Um, okay. Yeah, it's quite fun. I'm gonna just put it over here, and then Walter, my beautiful assistant. Yes, ma'am. 
Um, you're just going to prevent this from sticking, and you're going to let me know when it starts to like really. I feel like uh, well, like sizzle oh, and boil oh, and things. Next time. Um, All right, so we're bringing up the sizzle. While we're waiting for this to sizzle, yes. what is your favorite Zelda game? Okay. Okay. So I have opinions that are controversial on this. My first entry into The Legend of Zelda, like I feel like everyone's first entry is then their favorite. And so when I say this is my favorite, that is a, is, is a different feeling than this is the best game. Okay? Right. So yeah. I had like a very traditional... Um, we were on vacation, my family visiting our cousins, and my cousin was like, hey, you're annoying. <laughs> I'm going to sit you down in front of this video game, and you're going to leave me alone. And I, I think I was like seven or eight. I don't, I don't quite recall. Um, but it was Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Um, and I just remember being terrified of, you know, when you're like running across the field and the drawbridge, yes. the Sorry, the drawbridge is coming up, and you're like, you're going as fast as you can, and there are ways to get there in time if you're a speedrunner. But haha, I was seven. Um, it's actually perfectly and then, designed. And then if you the sun goes there. down, and the brook it comes up, and then like skeletons come out, and you're being attacked. It's like just like the most terrifying. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I really really for loved me it. it was the the getting going on into the graves to get like the the, the hook shot the, the song that changes the day that too uh, yes or the hook shot but the first one was i never wanted to be out at night so the first thing i did when i got out of the kokiri forest was i would go get the the day night song that changes it but going and getting through all the re or the undeads and that was terrifying to me yep yep i'm so in agreement once we i've got a I've got a sizzle here. Once we got a sizzle, what do we do? Uh, is it, it, would you call it like a rolling sizzle? Is it like a rolling boil? Or like how much of a sizzle is it? Yeah? Yeah? Pretty good sizzle. Okay. Yeah. Um, then we are going to, let me read from my book here. Should we rotate um, the... We're going to add the sugar, apple cider vinegar, lemon juice, cinnamon, ground ginger, and the jalapeno pepper. Um, so... Now, I just want to show you guys. Yeah. This is what 700 grams of sugar looks like. Three and a half cups yeah, of sugar. Yeah, it's a lot. I didn't yeah, out same. Here. But it's a jelly. It's yeah, a jam. It looks That's what like it's a lot. To be because it is a lot. <laughs> That's how jelly is made. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take then out I have pre-mixed my ginger and lemon juice and cinnamon. So I've got all that here, and I'm going to go ahead and throw that in. Yeah. Also, I, I think you should flip your skewers. How I do that is just lift one on the side, and they should kind of rotate themselves on the skewer. Um, if they don't, then they're going to rotate okay, yeah. them. I'm going to get there. Multitasking. While you guys are doing that, I'm we're just say, we're doing a lot. Yeah, listen, we've got like three more recipes after this. You're getting so much love in the chat right now. The general consensus is that you're adorable. Oh, I you love know, you. You're adorable. Hey, you guys are wonderful. 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 Oh. All right, now I, I'm about to flip my mushrooms. Thanks for coming and washing, guys. Jelly. On the yes. jelly, once I've added all my ingredients, um, I bring it back to a boil. Is that correct? You're going to yep, you're gonna stir it all up, and then you're going to bring it back to a boil. You're, like, faster than me. So we did half tablespoon apple cider vinegar. Make sure you shake that. Um, One-fourth teaspoon. Mm -hmm. Do I have teaspoons? One-fourth teaspoon cinnamon. Um, just grab some of the spine. If you want to get fancy, you can harvest your own cinnamon. If you wanted to tweak it a little bit, you could. Like if you wanted a lot of cinnamon, could you add I that? missed what you said. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. I highly recommend. So that was the most difficult part about writing this. Just, like, I want to add way more than is reasonable of garlic. So I'm going to, like, third the amount of garlic for, like, a normal person amount of garlic. Uh... If that feel if that sounds like that's your thing, like I think this cookbook's gonna work. Just triple garlic on any particular recipe. Uh, ground ginger. Also, we've got one eighth teaspoon ground ginger. But if you want it a little bit more kicky, just 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 dump it in. Just do your best. Um, I, I moved things in my kitchen for this setup, and now I'm like, where are my hot pads? Where are my knives? <laughs> Okay, I have dumped all of the sugar mixture in. We are going to stir that and get back to oil. I think this is the point where we're going to put a jalapeno. When were we supposed to put the jalapeno? Oh, we're, we're putting it in now. We got it. Um, so there are a few ways that you can put in a jalapeno. 
Um, if you are not really a fan of spice, you could actually just put it in whole and, and bring it to a boil and it will add just like the slightest depth mm -hmm. to your jelly. You're not even going to interpret it as spice. You're more like, you, I'm going to cover mine. Um, I'm going to keep all of the little seeds in here. Um, they're going to come out when Walter uh, stirs this all up. Um, and we're going to hope that this is actually a spicy jalapeno pepper instead of the weak pepper that I had a few weeks ago. Fingers crossed. Yeah, just stir that all in. Try to, try to separate the seeds so they come out because we want it. We want it to keep us like a lot of the warm cake. on the icy mountain. I agree. A lot of the cake is in the seeds, so if you want to take down the spice, you can take the seeds out. If Absolutely. You want to keep the seeds, like keep the seeds in if you want to use those. Yeah. Um. During the step. So for uh, my habanero, I split like... that in half and threw it in. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna see how that works for you, but yeah, I have used chili peppers. I'm excited. This, we'll see. Um. Chili peppers was the original recipe I had, but then I tried it with jalapeno and it was 10 times better. So I so probably recommend the jalapeno. <laughs> Same. Um, yeah, once that is done, it's gonna kind of foam on the top and you're just gonna skim off that foam. You don't want it. Um, and then okay. we're just gonna let it cool and we're gonna be able to taste it by the end of this live stream, I think. I mean, we can taste it now. You're just gonna burn your tongue in more ways than one, hopefully. Mm. Yeah. Right, and how yeah. long did you say it simmers before we get that foam on top? Uh, this is a good question. Um, okay, in the, in the book, I say bring to a full boil again and boil while stirring for one full minute. So once it's got, got it, okay. rolling hot, yeah, we're just gonna, you're just gonna continue stirring and then yep. it's gonna kind of foam and it will be delicious foam. You can, you can reserve the foam for later. The foam is quite good. To. Yes. Oh, I will be tasting this. Well, um, I think this might be a great um, and time, and time to because stirring. Go ahead. Go ahead, Walter. No, you, you go first. <laughs> no, no, well, I was going, I, I was I was going to take my flag for Majora's Mask. If you have not played oh, Majora's yeah. Mask, A+. Plus. <laughs> I have my, I bought a gator on Etsy. That's all the, the masks from Majora's Masks. But um, having seen oh, yes. how much sugar yes. uh, goes, goes into this recipe, which I'm super, super excited about, I know that I'm going to need an opportunity to run that sugar off. And so I am excited to tell you guys about a couple of things that Pop Culture Classroom is doing. And one of those things that we're doing is called Pop Run. It is happening right now. So you need to pull out your sneakers. You need to grab your sweatbands and find your nerdiest track suit. Pop Culture Classroom is hosting a virtual 5K. We may not be able to gather together, but we can still run for a good cause in Pop Run 2020. So this is an entirely virtual fun run that can be done whenever, wherever, and however you want. You can run, skip, walk, or just visualize your way through a 5K, which is 3.1 miles for anybody wondering, uh, to support literacy, celebrate our pop culture community, and get some really cool merch from Pop Culture Classroom. You can even use this as an opportunity to catch some Pokemon and Pokemon Go, hatch those eggs, or go to your local Little Free Library and drop off a book or grab a book from there. Um, then if you want to show off a bit, you can upload a photo of yourself after your run uh, or catching Pokemon or whatever and using hashtag pop run and make sure to tag pop culture classroom when you do that. So right now through December 14th, you can sign up at popcultureclassroom.org slash pop run. Registration packages start at $27 with options to add more of that sweet, sweet merch like stickers and socks and gators and beanies. And I am not lying when I say I cannot wait to get my hands on some of that merch. Liz, give me some merch. Um, it's going to be awesome. So all proceeds from this run support our nonprofit mission to inspire a love of learning, increase literacy throughout the Denver community through interactive programming and workshops, as well as create classroom resources for educators everywhere. And speaking of those resources, one of the many resources that we create is our curricular units for teachers. So I'm a former elementary school teacher, and I am absolutely in awe of how teachers are making things work right now between online learning, going back and forth between online and in-person. We know teachers that you guys are doing everything in your power to continue learning uh, for your students right now. And Pop Culture Classroom has lots of free resources to help you guys do that. So specifically, I just want to quickly highlight two of our curricular units that are available, Storytelling Through Comics and Game On. And these curricular units teach your students how to create co um, board games and comics. They're common core aligned and they can be worked into whatever you're already teaching. Uh, it just gives your students the tools they need to be able to show their learning in new and exciting and unique ways. 
Again, both of these curriculums are completely free. You can find both of them at classroom.popcultureclassroom.org. And make sure to subscribe to our email list while you're there to stay up to date with all of Pop Culture Classroom's educational resources. All right. My, all right. Mushrooms, my mushrooms have about two minutes left on them. My, ooh, my, my jelly is foamed. I'm going to remove the habanero from there and skim off the foam and get it in a jar and get it ready, which means I think, Amy, if you guys are ready, we're Perfect. moving on to recipe number three. Perfect. We are, um, which I believe, oh no, I actually prepared for rock hard food, but it's actually, oh, we're going to start our tea. Um, if you're familiar with Legend of Zelda, you might be familiar with Chateau Romani. Chateau Romani, um, which is, I it's like a milk-based uh, yeah, it was at the milk bar, Majora's Mask, actually. So it would give you infinite magic for the next three days if you took it, uh, which is where we got the idea. And it's delicious. It is. Okay. Um, this vintage milk is inspired by royal milk dessert teas. Combine fresh caramelized sugar with a dash of black tea and milk for a steamy cuppa that also grants unlimited magic. Serve in Chateau Romani milk jars for an authentic milk bar look. Um, so we're going to start, I think, with just water and sugar in a pan on medium heat. Um, I don't think you need that much water. I feel like there's only a tablespoon. Yes, one tablespoon of water. Look at me. I know things. <laughs> and Tayshin's taking over in the kitchen over here. She's cooking go. these recipes with you guys. Right. There, there so you chat, if you got stuff, let me know. I'll hand it off to Amy and Walter and Tayshin for you. Perfect. Um, so added one tablespoon just to this little pan. Um, next is one fourth cup of granulated sugar. Um, I realize this looks like a lot of sugar, and my answer is you're kind of right. I picked some really sugar heavy recipes. I'm very sorry. We made the really delicious stuff, <laughs> not necessarily all the healthy stuff. It's, okay. it's healthy for your soul. Um, you can take out the jalapeno peppers yep. um, and skim off any foam over the sink. You got it. Um, and then you can bring it back and like put it somewhere to cool. You got it. Um, uh, yeah, Matt, don't don't put the lid on the jar because you're gonna want it to to cool down. Um, I actually have a fully. Is that me? I hear beeping. Um, that was me. I have a full like jarring instruction and direction guide in the book, so we can you can actually prep and then conclude and be able to store these at room temperature for months at a time, but that is not what we're doing today because it was kind of intensive. Uh, but if you want to do that, we have that available in the cookbook alongside salt grilling and leaf steaming. I have a full chapter on how to cook over an open fire because apparently leaf does that a lot. Um, yeah, yeah, doing our best. Uh, Tayden, how are you doing? I'm good. So I, that. I put the sugar in and it, it's, Kind of bubbling, so just continue stirring. Um, yeah, um, it's gonna it's gonna kind of melt, then it's gonna kind of bubble, and then it will start to caramelize. Um, and then we're gonna shock it with some some milk, and it's gonna like crystallize for a second, but it'll it'll redissolve afterward. Um, is Tayshin frozen? Am I frozen? You're you're still moving. I I don't know. Hey Matt, can I, I you see it? Maybe. Are we good? Am I frozen? Oh no! <laughs> oh, good, good. Matt, uh, I, I can hear you too. I hear you suddenly. Oh, okay, it was I, just it was just me being unable to hear for a second. I'm I'm fine. I can see Tayshin now. We'll make it work. We're doing fine. Um, actually, uh, do not stir. Um, once it's kind of caramelized, so like once it's it'll bubble, and you're, you don't don't stir it while okay. while that is happening because you just want it to to caramelize. Um, you can kind of swivel the pan, um, but once it's kind of brown and thick, um, just keep your eyes on it. And if it begins to burn, immediately take it off. You don't want burnt sugar in your tea, probably. Should Matt and I remove the mushrooms, or are they fine where they are? Uh, yeah, you can remove the mushrooms. All right. Mine are here. Let's they are that. cooling. Uh, yes. Do they smell good? Oh, my God. The, the dill and the garlic together, it smells so good. Like, I... I'm gonna wait until we're done to taste, but yes. Your so smells good. I'm really excited just about how that is smelling right now. Yeah, my kitchen smells amazing right now. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I need my sugar higher key. How are you doing, Tate? 
How's Cajun? I'm doing good. I have I to you. say, I really like this recipe because it has the potential for an alcoholic component. <laughs> And we all need yes. a little bit of that. I know this excited. chapter, the introduction. <laughs> uh, I named this chapter, the introduction to Hyrulean alchemy and bartending. And each recipe has like alchemical, like just like a normal non-alcoholic recipe. And then many of them do also have an alcoholic version. Uh, I felt it was important to not just do a full alcoholic chapter because many children were buying this. Chapter. I know. <laughs> it's a, it's a really common gift um, parents will buy and yeah. cook with their children is like a I've big really demographic so we're kind of like heartwarming like reduced messages huh. of like you've made my 11 year old into a chef he just cooked salmon mayonnier and i don't even know what that is i'm like look at this that's amazing, um, amazing. I, I like kind of choke up every time i look at our etsy page so if you etsy like the unofficial legend of zelda cookbook you'll see in the reviews people will post pictures of like them and their kids cooking together and i'm just like Okay. <laughs> That's exactly how I learned Aww. to cook. It was like a parental and then grandparents, um, like cooking as me a too, family during like holidays and things. And like my mom is an experimenter in the kitchen. She has this soup called A L B O E that stands for a little bit of everything. And so just leftovers in the fridge, <laughs> leftovers, meats, and like just random ingredients. And she would be able to care about everything to make spices and to like make delicious soup every single time. Uh -huh. like, my mother is an astonishing woman. Um, but I think that that experimentation really helped me create this cookbook because I'm just far more willing to be like, yeah, what about this? <laughs> it's fine. We'll figure it out. Um, I think mine is about to caramelize or burn. There's Tolko, no, we are not putting our mushrooms in our tea. We are making a few different recipes here. Uh, I'm but putting I like my the idea. In my tea. Yes. <laughs> You're correct. You you can, but I wouldn't advise. Not that kind of tea. It's delicious. <laughs> or those kind of mushrooms. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> um, okay, so okay. once that has I caramelized put milk in. Oh, did you? Okay. You're faster. I did. It it, it it started to burn. So I wanted to the instructions cool dead if it started to burn. Yes, you're gonna add the milk and the tea bags as well, I think at the same time. Okay. Um, and you're just gonna, I think, I think you stir it now. Yes, you're gonna stir it, you're gonna re-dissolve the caramelized sugar, um, but do not boil at this point because you'll, you'll make the milk taste really weird. So just like, you're just, until it's warm again, and then we're gonna serve it. Yeah, and lower your heat um, if you're ever on. <laughs> okay, like. Take out of this. Perfect. No one's on fire yet, which is a plus. I'm on fire. <laughs> Speak for yourself, sir. And um, it's just it's like really cheap black tea bags. Like this is a pretty easy recipe. Yep. Yeah, I think we're using yep. Lipton tea, but feel free to use whatever black tea is best for you. Um, it really, it's black tea is perfect because it's kind of bitter on its own, but mixed with this, it tastes amazing. So highly recommend. Yeah. Um, something like an, if you don't know what black tea is, something like an English breakfast is perfect. So something along those lines. Um, um, will you do the stirring? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you're going to find that there's like uh, this mess of sugar crystallized at the bottom. Yep. You're just going to continue stirring and Separating that. Yep. I'm gonna put it on low for you. You're good. You're good. I just spilled milk all over the stove. It's fine. Um, where are we at? Are we doing well? The smell goes away. It's fine. It's a delicious smell. This is how Chateau Romani is made. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing it in the bar. The customary burning of the milk. Um, okay. Yes, and then if you don't I'll want to make it alcoholic, warm you can up. add some Baileys at the end. Sorry, what? So now we're just going to let the tea warm up? Yep. Yep. Just okay. warm up, not boiling, just like drinking level Good. amount. And then we can pour it into a teacup. Or if you have a milk jar, that would be the most aesthetic thing to pour it into. But I don't right now. <laughs> um, we have uh, the right. internet's uh, saying Earl Grey is their choice for this one. I I had to oh, make mine with chai. Yes. Oh, that definitely means that I have some peeps in here. Hey, Discord peeps, I love you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> chai would be good with this. Let's do some chai. Thank you for being here. Welcome to the show. Amen. Mm 
Okay, I think the next recipe, if we're ready, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, we're gonna do rock hard food. Um, this is actually like a familial, it's, it's not the exact recipe that I got from my grandparents, but it was one that was very similar and we made it a lot as a kid because it's a perfect children's recipe. All of the ingredients are raw, there's no cooking, it's very, very messy, messy. like ideal, ideal for children. Um, so we're gonna start with graham cracker crumbs and a big bowl, which is lovely. Yeah, um, and I just made my own graham cracker crumbs. You could like the s'more graham crackers, you put a bunch into a bag, you become very, very violent. It's a very cathartic practice to make graham cracker crumbs, which is another reason I love this recipe. Um, if you're feeling frustrated about 2020 and not being able to go to Denver Pop Culture Con, this is a great relief. Real. Uh, we have one and one fourth cup of graham cracker crumbs, and the the ratio of this actually kind of matters in this recipe. Otherwise, you might get some soggy rocks or too dry of rocks. We're actually going to make two different kinds of rocks. We're going to do uh, like frosted rocks, which has a dusting of powdered sugar, and then we're also going to do. Um, I guess normal rocks, which have a dusting of hot chocolate powder. Normal um, rocks on the rocks? Yes, so you're gonna mix the crumbs and sugar, which is one fourth cup sugar. I'm sorry, I'm just sugaring all of the up. Who doesn't need more sweetness in their life? It's, it's, it's great. Uh, and then half a teaspoon I'm, I'm, I'm ready to of. Cools off. It's really you, good. Have you tried it yet? Did you try it? Feel free to dip a finger in. I it. did, yes. How do you like it? How, I did, and I will say that the, if anybody's wondering, the one habanero split in half is a very mild addition. I like okay. it. If I were doing it again, I might do two habanero instead. Okay. Up uh, the spice. By a little bit Yeah, we've done versions that with, Matt with two tasted it before. melts like Indiana Jones. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you didn't breathe fire. Oh, no, not today. Darn. Next episode. Tijin, did, did you pair our cooking to Finding of the Covenant? Yeah, <laughs> I did. It was um, so just added it a half teaspoon of cinnamon. Um, one. <laughs> <laughs> now we're doing nutmeg. If you don't like nutmeg, nutmeg is a flavor. Some people hate it. Some children hate it. Always check with your child before adding nutmeg to it. Um, because it can ruin can ruin it. It's just like a. I think it's a flavor similar to licorice for some small children. Um, yeah, yeah. And then half cup of peanut butter. My grandmother hated yeah, that. You can thing. use Everything I think I think I know it was no. I love them. I think it's a great flavor. The Chateau Romani came out really good. Oh yeah! Wait, can you pour I'll me pour a teacup of it? Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, Suggest I take out the tea bags first. Um, that I can see from your mushrooms. Yes, I definitely have. Give us like a scale. <gasps> I didn't even do that. Wait, I'm so jealous. Give me a mushroom. I, I, I've been sneaking a couple tastes here and there, and I've been having trouble not swearing, but I uh, have what I'm going with. So we'll see. <laughs> mm. Mine is like encrusted with garlic salt. That dill weed. No. It, that, mm. That's what makes it, I'm telling you. Mm. Really good. Really good. Mm. They do look a little bit charred. I wonder if I, I went for smaller mushrooms. Because I thought it was a little, a little thick. Uh, but you might have to degrease either the cooking time or the, the temperature if you use small mushrooms. Actually, but these, like the kind of crispy exterior is really, really hitting the spot right now anyway. So. Mm. Chef Amberell always says brown food tastes mm -hmm. good. Um, and if my husband is watching right now, you better come get some of these mushrooms now because they will be gone by the end. Absolutely. <laughs> it's a real problem. Here's what the Chateau Romani looks like. I don't know if we can get the color quite right. It might be a little bright. But it's, it's just delicious. like a creamy, creamy milk tea. Mm -hmm. I based it off of like royal milk tea. So, so. It's really delicious. Mm. It's incredible. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a little it's caffeinated. So Mmm. Lovely. 
It is it is quite sweet. Oh yeah, I like it. Um, if you are not a fan of sweetness, we definitely have the, the sugar in this recipe. But if you haven't been able to tell at this point, we like sweetness. I really, really like sugar. Um, mm. Good. Thing is fine. I'm good. Thank you. You sure? Yes. Okay. Um, okay. I just added peanut butter. So yes. Sorry. Oh, no, I was going to ask, once you get all of those added for your rock-hard food, what's the, the next step? Um, is messiness. So I've done half a cup peanut butter. Next is honey. Um, and then you just kind of crunch it all together in your hands um, until it's pretty, I guess, heterogeneously mixed. Um, but they'll start to form little, like you should start to form little balls. <laughs> I'm sorry. Heter for I mean, uh, your word of the day is heterogeneous. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, okay, it works. It works. Because it's not a homogenous mixture because there's still. Okay. I feel like you're judging me. Mm -hmm. No, it's good. No, it's not good. Excuse me. <laughs> Matt, you I'm just doing my best person. here. No, I love it. On um, if you guys are show. anyone watching right now, uh, first of all, thank you, husband. He says, oh, my God, these are amazing. So I do have someone uh, else tasting this food that can vouch for it. How did if you're a viewer right now or you're watching and you, uh, you've you used this cookbook or you have this cookbook, let us know what your favorite recipe from the book is. Yes, please tell me. <laughs> yeah, uh, shout out to our Discord. I love you guys. You are you so cool. You guys are cool. so on top of it. You guys post so many pictures of food every day. I can't even, like, keep up with it. Also, the mods. The mods the of this mods, Discord. Like Danielle, I just modded like, like, some like, random people. Amazing. I don't even know these people, but now I do, and you guys are my family. To the welcome party, they I love, love you guys. People, like, every, like it'll be like ten minutes before someone is welcomed on my Discord. Um, it's it's heartwarming. I don't know. I'm very heartwarmed. However, if you join our Discord, and you can join, you go to my website, which is the unofficial legend of Zelda cookbook.com. I did not have to look in order to remember that. <laughs> What's my book name? Um, no, no. It's memorable. It's yeah, that's a good one. It's memorable. <laughs> yeah, I was trying my best. Um, yeah, it's a huge community of people. So however every... you will owe us a cat picture. Cat so, pictures or, are very or, important. Or any, any um, pet. Any pet is any fine. Any pet is also fine. As long if you as don't have cute. one, you have to go find and then post a picture. Um, Your friend's pets are fine, too. Yeah, um, we actually, so we have a little letter that we send with every cookbook, and it has an invite to the Discord in it, yeah. and so we have a bunch of people who come in and, like, show us what they've made, or, like, changes they've made to recipes, you know, uh, it's That's really, awesome. That's a great idea. it's super Thank fun. You. I get a little bit extra with these, so if you, if you order one of these from my Etsy shop, um, I hand brown paper, like, package, like, with twine, and I, yep. like, wax steel an envelope for you, and I stamp it, and, like, sign it for I you, like, that. this is, we're, we're kind of an extra family. Yeah, it'll save you, you time on gift wrapping. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> well, I just like the aesthetic of, like, brown paper packages. Tied up with string. string. <laughs> these, are, these are my favorite things. Those extra touches go a long way. Absolutely. They really it's just fun. It's just fun. Are you having fun, Tajin? Uh, getting your hands? I guess. Did so you get your hands messy? What well, kind of cook are you? Messy now. I'm adding the honey, and that's where it's really about to get interesting. Yeah, I haven't made these in so long. This is such They're a nostalgic so feeling. Um, I like didn't eat before we started streaming, and now I'm just so happy with the food. <laughs> if you eat all the mushrooms, I, I will kill you. I uh, know. I love them for you. Told. I jokingly told my husband we were having strawberry jelly and mushrooms for dinner, and I think that might turn out to be more true than I thought it would. Yes. Be. Yep. Yep. And now, and now you understand why I just sometimes eat that jelly just plain. Healthy decisions during COVID 2020. The jelly is really good. <laughs> yeah, any kind of multi-grain chip, uh, any sort of like what, like what you have, club crackers, perfect. Um, it's mm -hmm. amazing on everything. It actually like. It does get you like servings of fruit and stuff. It's a little sugary, but it's still very good for you. Thank you for reminding me. Ah, yes, of course. Yeah, he's gonna start eating. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, seriously, go for it. Okay. Uh, your your mods, by the way, are loving you in the oh, chat. They're just saying thank you for shouting oh, us out. Thank you They're guys here. so much. The royal um, guard, the royal welcome people. committee. I love you guys so much. You guys have made that such a. Lots of people. Saying they love all the recipes. We've had a shout out for the red jew, uh, the red chew jelly. Yes. Um, Noble pursuit is delicious. a pretty delicious. Is pretty delicious. Oh, yes. Uh. yes, that's also one of my favorites. I'm glad they like it. So also, Death Mountain Muddy Milkshakes is a is an adventure. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's good too. 
Noble Pursuit's a classic. Noble Pursuit, didn't we make a Yiga Pursuit as well? Yes, like, yeah. I, I, I made like a Nemesis version of that, which adds a banana because it's Yiga Pursuit. Yes, Let's yes. be clear, we're nerds. Almost yeah. all the Yiga recipes have bananas, obviously. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so there are some recipes that include a lot of bananas, and I put like a little like footnote in the bottom, like, just, oh, the boss is great. Like, the, yeah, the Yiga symbol or whatever, and it's just like in the footnote. <laughs> No, that would be copyright. Oh, right, you're right. You. Listen. <laughs> we thought about doing that, but decided not to, yes. Okay, I think mine is well mixed enough in order to start making these balls. And my one warning to you is to not make, what are they called, talum? Ta oh, the talum? big, the big Do rock Do not guys. make gigantic boulders out of these. You need yes. the bite-sized, small, because they are, like, rich. Um, I used to, and you still, you still can do this. Um, I used to do just straight up cocoa powder on these, which make them very, very decadent. I like them particularly with coffee. Mm. However, for a lot of people, that was that was way too much just straight <laughs> cocoa powder. So we're using hot chocolate mm. powder and um, powdered sugar. Will you move that book away? From Absolutely. Me? Otherwise, I'll touch it and it's going to be a disaster. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, we'll be auctioning off the filthy. No, no. <laughs> Signed, uh, licked, uh, you know, yes, you know exactly. Ball here. <laughs> okay, so I have made a ball. Do you see my my delicious rock hard food? Um, and now I'm going to like just stick it in the middle of this powdered sugar and just give it a roll, um, so that it is covered on all sides. Mm -hmm. Oh, will you give me another plate? Yes, actually? absolutely. I did not think this through. Uh, you want a flat one? Walter, you're doing fantastic. Look at him being a beautiful assistant. Thank, Thank you. Out. Yes, everyone. That's not an aesthetic oh, plate. You want a pretty one? Plate. Oh, okay. You want a pretty one? Sorry, now I'm being really picky. <laughs> <laughs> We're so funny. Internet ready. Yeah, Come on. I mean, listen. <laughs> do you want a Wedgwood one? Is, yes, I do. Is this big enough? enough? Thank you. Yeah. Okay, and so then and then you've got, there you go. Um, you can't see it on camera because it's white on white. But it's a delicious looking. Delicious. <laughs> That's actually maybe a little bit too big. Try to make them small. That is my suggestion. Yeah, yeah. You got it, Tiffin. Wow. This uh the Chateau Romano came out really, really good. I feel like my mana bar has just turned blue and will be infinite for the rest of my life. I am gonna have to make some myself because it does sound really delicious and I could use the caffeine perk, but I think the sugar is gonna do uh similar things for me. It is very, very good. Okay, and then this is just a normal rock hard food. So we've rock frosted, and we have more chocolatey. Yep. Um, and you can divide, maybe actually, Tajin, try both, and then make whatever one you prefer. My preference is toward the frosted, because okay. it's so um, But some people really enjoy chocolate, awesome. so. Yeah. Customizable. Uh, Kin on YouTube oh, says, what a useful sous chef and very handsome. Mm -hmm. No, oh my, thank you. I am for hire for the small price of... <laughs> Free food. For the, yeah, for the small price of delicious food, I too can work in your kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> and shake off, shake off any excess powdered sugar. Uh, and yeah. These are amazing. Yeah, yeah. You, do, you, do you like that? Children can make them, and that's why it's, it's so fun. And then you can just... Yeah, for a lot of these recipes, we did try to think of, like, if you have a small person with you or, like, yeah. like their roles they can do, and we'll kind of highlight, like, hey, this is the simple, easy part. Maybe this part's more complicated. Yeah, I actually, so the first chapter of the book is a whole bunch of menus and recipes. So you might have a, um, uh, a like, a heart, I feel like I had, like, a heart menu thing. Oh, uh, yes. Like a hearty dinner menu. And yes. then, so then it was all kind of, like, romantic themed, but, like, a multi-course dinner, right? Um, so I have, I think, like, idea. like 15 different, like, themed dinner courses, all referencing recipes throughout the book. Um, and one of these is the new player menu, which are all children-friendly to make with. Um, and they include, they include these rock hard foods, which I think is fun. Yeah. Now, I, we are running out of time. Oh, no. I know that we have one more. I'm so oh, no, sorry. It's totally. Uh, we, no, it's okay. This is our show. We can go as long as we want. Okay. But I just want to be We're respectful going till of you know, our producer's time and things like that. There it is. I like, we'll be here all night, guys. Yeah, uh, Matt. Streaming Breath of the Wild sure. soon. If you, <laughs> if you want, if you want to take like viewer questions or something or, or had other questions for us, we can skip the last recipe and do that or we can do whatever you want. I know you have only so much time. We can't skip the last recipe. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe we can. <laughs> How do we make the hard elixir? 
Uh, yeah, I was gonna say, and I know that last recipe isn't complicated, but I was gonna ask while we're rolling uh, rock hard food. Um, yes. I know you mentioned earlier that you have two different versions of the book on your website, and if I saw correctly on the Etsy mm-hmm. page, you can even get the master edition misprint. Is yes, that correct? yes, yes. Uh, which was like a really sad thing. So I, I, when I first ordered the master editions, I ordered enough for the Kickstarter plus a, like a few hundred extra um, to sell. And um, the first print run had an almost 15% misprint slash like defect rate. And so like over one in 10 books would be like, and and, like, I'm a very particular person. I'm just unwilling to give a scuffed book to anyone. And so like, here's a minor (laughs) scratch. Here's like the smallest scuff on the spine. And I'm like, nope. Nope, that doesn't, we're not, we're not giving that to anybody. So a lot of his prints were really interesting. Like, for example, like you can see kind of how this is gold and silver on the exterior, mm-hmm. and then we kind of have these raised bands on the side. But there would be funny glitches. Like, there was one that was entirely silver. So none of the gold. Yeah, that one was up. really cool. It was entirely Actually. silver all over. Um, sometimes. Um, some, some would be, like, upside down. Like, the silver yes. on the cover would be upside down. Um, or the interior, the entirety of the interior would be, interior would be upside down. The interiors of these <laughs> are pr- pristine. And so when you're ordering a misprint, generally it's a scuff on the spine that I was like, I'm not giving this to anybody. Um, and you have a cookbook that is, it's, it's the still, it's still the cookbook, but you're getting it at a discount. Um, instead, and yeah. then it's also, well, I mean, can, when, when I was, when I was taking a look, you, you had the photos of the misprints and I was looking at them and. I was like, those are the most minor. Like, I love your quality control, but for someone They're who's trying to save so them, tiny. Bucks, I'm like, uh, yeah, I'll take that. Uh, please. <laughs> I like had them stacking up in the garage too, because like, what do I do with all these books? And then someone was like, well, you should sell them. And I was like, I guess I could, but no one's going to want these. But actually, they've been quite popular. Um, yeah. I was about to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's cute. They both make perfect. Um, well, let's, is, let's do that. The yeah, standard. Yeah, doing the last recipe. Oh, go ahead, Walter. Um, be pretty you. you got it yeah Matt, i can show you so like the standard version has almost all it's 195 recipes in this one and then the, the master edition has a couple of more like more difficult stuff um what we call the master mm-hmm. chapter um and then beyond that it's just mm-hmm. like obviously this one is made to be like cheaper lighter easier to move around mm-hmm. and then this was the one where we decided just to go all out so if you're looking for a badass house decoration just put this in your kitchen <laughs> Um, my buddy Scott, who's a chef, I mean, that's what drew how me to it. How dare you yeah. just insinuate that people use it as decoration? Uh, Do you know well, how hard I worked on these recipes? This is, this is highly <laughs> used. I went into my buddy Scott's kitchen. He's a big chef, and he had it in there, like, open, and, like, he had just made some of the stuff, and I was like, I see what you're doing. He's like, no, I use it all the time. This is not here just to entertain you. Like, he didn't even know I was coming over that day, so I was like, yes, we're in use. It's still, still valuable. Um, it's a giant... Well, I, I will say... When I was looking at it, I was like, oh, that'll go great next to my hardcover Dark Horse Zelda books. Um, but, you know, cooking with some of these, I'm like, well, I got to I gotta cook these recipes, too. Like, make sure it gets used, but Deserves don't get a place it dirty. In the kitchen. The, All I'm saying, thing. get a little book stand. Yeah. <laughs> All I've ever wanted is for something I helped make to be next to the Hyrule Historia, and then I can die happy. That's, that's all I need. <laughs> <laughs> It's about to happen in my house. <laughs> All right, so we've got hearty, hearty elixir, right? Um, yes, and this is actually quite simple. Um, and it can be made alcoholic if you have white rum. Um, but I'm not personally doing that right now. <laughs> I feel like that is a dangerous game. Um, we're going to start with... So I'm going to just say right now that I forgot that I don't currently have a cocktail mixer. It's the roommate that I normally, like... <laughs> She had the cocktail mixing supplies, and I did not. So we're going to do stirred, not shaken today. I apologize. Uh, James Bond would be proud. That's all right. Or the officer yeah, right. would be proud. It's okay. <laughs> um, so we're just going to add all the ingredients into um, one one thing, um, plus ice. Uh, we're going to start with two tablespoons of stone fruit syrup. Um, and you can find this generally at your like local grocery store. Um, but sometimes they won't have it, in which case I highly recommend Monin syrups online. They have a specific stone fruit. I guess I should explain what stone fruit is. Um, any, any fruit with like a pit in it. So a peach or a nectarine or even like a dark cherry. Um, all of those are stone fruit and you could pick any one of those to add to this, or you could get actual stone fruit syrup. And it's generally a mix of all three. Um, so we're going to do two tablespoons. Tasia, you went shopping for that this morning. Were you able to find it? Oh, yeah. I was. I found um, apricot syrup. So we're using that. 
I thought okay, no, perfect. that works. Yeah. Four. We'll see. Yes. So two tablespoons of that, and then we're going to counteract it. Counteract it. We're not doing that. But uh, with orange juice, two tablespoons <laughs> as well. Um, so what's fun about the drinks is we almost made an entire like dedicated chapter. I think the last stretch goal on our Kickstarter, we hit all our goals, except for we're going to make a dedicated companion drink book, which we have not done yet. But this is one of the, the drink first. Drink book is coming. Yes, the drink book is coming. If you need help, Thank I got you. you. I'm going to need taste testers, Matt, so I'm going to call I you. I have not yet started this. Everyone's like, when is the drink book coming out? And I'm like, listen, this is three years of my life. The next three years. It, like, expect it much later. I think I even say in the book, like, yeah, like, expect an email from me in, like, 2021, the summer. And like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was nope. so optimistic and ah, right. young then. Oh, oh, yes. Now I'm supposed to do this. Uh, but yes, one day, perhaps, maybe. Um, I just added a three-fourth cup of black tea that was chilled in the fridge. Um, and now I think I'm supposed to mix it. Yes, I'm supposed to get ice and then mix it. If anyone's wondering what I'm doing, I'm off screen, just slowly eating every single graham cracker ball. Just, I was munching on my, my my chips over here, and I had to put my mic on mute because nobody wants to hear that. Oh, this is now a like cooking ASMR stream. Yeah. Okay, listen to all these delightful sounds. It's time. Um, yeah, so I'm just stirring it with ice. Normally I would shake it, and then we would strain it into this potion bottle. Um, oh, I just realized that I could have been the whole time just wiping myself on my apron. Yes. That's why I got this. That's why you have it. I'm just so used to not touching. Okay, I have a potion bottle. I'm trying. I mean, messy kitchens are like, I can't seem to get away from them. <laughs> I'm just doing my best here. This is as clean as my kitchen gets, generally. <laughs> I apologize to my roommates. It's tough. Well, see, as long as food is happening. So, like, people will put up with right. mess if you give them food. This is, this is how I get through life. Um, the thing about kitchens just, is if they're really clean, it either means the person cooks all the time or never. And it depends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Just kidding. Ooh. laughs> I was trying and to Aaron's use ice cube. This is why you should use a strainer and a funnel. Yes, the funnel definitely makes it easier. I'm just dripping. That's beautiful. We're, we're, we're doing the temps. All of my backers are like, yep, this is the one. This is the person that we decided to give our money to. <laughs> this is me being a professional. You're nothing but love in the chat right now. Oh, mm -hmm. guys, I love you Vladimir so much. says, if, you're, if your kitchen what? isn't messy, then have you even cooked? I agree with Vladimir. If your kitchen isn't messy, is it really a kitchen? Agreed. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay, I think I have enough for two potion bottles. Normally, this is only supposed to make... Eight ounces, and these potion bottles are eight ounces. So, so you can get these really cheap. Not cheaply, sure what I did wrong. And they look amazing. You can like yeah, put them you out. can get those at Michaels or like Costco Super cute. or even like Joann's. Um, I realize I just like listed only U.S. things. I'm sorry if you do not live in the United States. I don't know where you can get these. Um, Presumably the local apothecary. <laughs> yes, potion seller, potion seller. <laughs> that, that's a very old reference. Also, it, you. You are getting a lot of excitement for this drink book. Yeah, I know. So Guys, people I are promise. people are thirsty will, for that drink happen. book. Um, I so this this book one of the the main um sources of why did you do this thing is it doesn't have pictures in it. Um, yes. I went for a very traditional like joy of cooking aesthetic of cookbook. I don't like it when cookbooks include pictures because it's too like no this is how you do it and this is how it should look at the end and this is what you were supposed to be doing. Um, plus, uh, having color pictures in your book would have like tripled the cost of this for me, and that wasn't really an option. So yes, it, it doesn't have pictures. <laughs> However, I have a lovely friend who is a watercolor artist, a beautiful watercolor artist, mm. and I think an aesthetic drink book, including potion bottles and like flora and fauna and like all of that, would be really, really pretty. What, so what that is, is my that is my dream for the cookbook. It will not be this large. So before your hopes get up that I'm <laughs> going to birth another like 300 page monstrosity, like manage no, your no, no. expectations. This is, like, the dainty, elegant cousin of the cookbook. Um, what was the name yes. of the artist who did it's our? It's the DLC. 
Um, yeah, so her name is Brittany Wieland. Hi, I love you, Brittany. Um, this is the, the signature page yep. of the cookbook. And so if you order this for me, I sign that we page. We sign right there. Um, and it's right at the front of the book. And she did this yeah. lovely piece. Um, those are silent princesses right there. Yeah, she did just like, right a there. nice like, black and white beautiful kind of aesthetic for it. And I just thought it was so pretty. And I just, I want like a whole book of it. Um, we should oh. I have potions, by the way. So here. Oh, um, yes. Sorry. Uh, shall cheers, we cheers? cheers. Um, to Hylia. You say taste you your hearty elixir? <laughs> I've got my hearty elixir. It's not in a potion bottle, though. Oh. I'll that still is, oh, toast so the wet ears. Mm. <laughs> Yay, toast. toast. Cheers to a successful trashing of a kitchen. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for that. Amy and Walter, this has been so much fun. Tell us one more time where yes. can people find your cookbook. Yes. Um, and is there anything that we can, well, we know what to expect from the, the far future, our, our drink book. But where can people find this cookbook right yes, now? Yes, this cookbook right now, it's available on Etsy. It's also available internationally. If you go onto your your in, your like nation's Amazon page, or if you prefer like Books A Million or any online bookseller, it is available. The standard edition is print on demand. And so then you can save a lot on shipping. So if you are international, that is an option for you. Otherwise, I sell both on my Etsy, but they come directly from me. And so the shipping will be more expensive if you are international. Okay. Um, you can just search like Zelda cookbook and I'm actually the first result. Like, <laughs> yeah, if, that's you guys. Like I didn't do that. Well done. <laughs> if you type in Etsy and the Zelda cookbook, we are uh, the first yeah, result. Yeah, unofficial Etsy Zelda cookbook. Dot com, the unofficial legend of Zelda cookbook.com is uh you'll you'll see all the links and things there and that's also where you can find that discord invitation so if you guys are interested in seeing a lot of pictures of delicious food and being hungry all the time um that's available to you uh we've got yeah. something like an air yeah. 85 85 on youtube is shouting out the discord as well they say make sure to check out the discord uh Aww, too thank for you. photos um and then, sorry, Vla uh, Vladimir's asking, where do you get the potion bottles? I think, Walter, you either, you either said it or you started to. Where do you find those? Um, I got them from Michael's. You can also get them at Hobby Lobby, Joann's. There's all sorts of little, like, crafting stores. They generally have, like, this perfect set potion bottle with a cork. Like, I dig it. If you are not in the United States and have access to that, there are all stores on Etsy who do make things like this that are pretty cheap and pretty easy to get to. So that's a plus. This is true. This is Definitely. true. Yeah, thank you guys Definitely. so much. I, I awesome. think a lot of my my backers and friends are in the in the chat. So like, thank you for coming. Love you guys. Thank you for not making me so uncomfortable. Agreed. And and <laughs> from the pop stream team to all of you guys that followed for the Zelda cookbook, we are so thankful that you guys tuned in today. We really appreciate it. Uh, so next week we're going to be off for Thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving, so we're going to chill. Uh, but the week after that, we have. Four different rotating shows here on PopStream. So that show, following Thanksgiving, will be the PopStream AV Club, where the cast there will be talking about our favorite film, TV, and video games that didn't get delayed in 2020, but our favorite media from 2020. So we'll be chatting there. Make sure you join us for that. And then this is our final episode of the PopStream Workshop for Season 1. The whole PopStream family will be coming together on December 17th for our Season 1 finale. And then we will be returning for season two in 2021, taking everything we've learned from this season and making an even better and more awesome show. So if you are new, please make sure you subscribe. We would love for you to come back. We've got a comics show. We've got our AV Club show, which is all about film, TV, and video games. We've got this show, which is the workshop where you learn new skills like cosplay or creating superheroes. And then we finally, we have our Denver Pop Culture Con flashback where you can check out some of the most awesome panels from Denver Pop Culture Con. Uh, we've got one up about the science of Wakanda and we even have Nintendo trivia up. So I know some of you guys are Nintendo fans out there. Check out our Nintendo, tri Nintendo trivia panel. It was a ton of fun. Um, and then, of course, don't forget, you can email us if you've got ideas for future guests or episodes or if you've got photos of yourself recreating any of the things that we made here today or from the cookbook. Um, you can either email those to popstream at popcultureclassroom.org or you can tweet me at Maddie Slay. You can tweet at Den Popcon for Denver Pop Culture Con. You can tweet at Pop Classroom. Or, of course, you can tweet right at Amy over here. Amy, what's your Twitter handle? Uh, I have a Twitter. Uh, Amy, Amy Woodworth, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, A I N E. It's French. I'm not French, but I can pronounce it. Um, but it's the cute yeah. way. <laughs> so, if you enjoyed this content and you and you like what Pop Culture Classroom does, please, again, make sure to give us a like, make sure to subscribe, um, ring the bell to know whenever you have new content. And of course, share this with your friends so that we can build 
the best pop culture fan community on the internet. And if you think our mission is cool, make sure you sign up, sign up for Pop Run um, that we told you about earlier in the show. And if you don't want any of that rad merch, you can always find our donation link at our website. Walter and Amy, thank you one more time. Thank you guys so much. Tajan, always a pleasure. Thank you guys. Love hanging out. Thank you and everyone. To all of you guys watching and listening out there, stay safe, stay healthy, stay home as much as you can, um, and go love each other. Take care, everybody.